Okay, what's up, everybody? This is CTB from North American Beatbox, and I am here with DJ Hershey, who recently just had, uh, what, I believe her third time at South by Southwest, you know, oh, yeah. killing the game, you know, representing the beatbox and whatnot, shooting some videos for sure and everything like that. Like, we'll get to that in this interview, but we're just going to have a little, little interview, you know, profiling her as an individual, her as an artist and the such thing where she got to where she is now. Some tips for anybody that, you know, wants to be an artist, wants to be a performer and the such, wants to make your own music and such, you know, how to get gigs and the such. So, yeah. So, for those that don't know Hershey, to help you just introduce yourself and who you are, what you do, what you've been doing, you know, and what your what your niche is in, as an artist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Hershey, but better known as DJ Hershey, because uh, I was a beatboxer first, but I've always loved. I'd actually, I actually, I never, I didn't even think of my name until much later. I was, I didn't even know what I was. I didn't have a name for a lot of time. It wasn't really a for a long time. But I am a DJ and a beatboxer. And I've been beatboxing for nine years and DJing for six. And yeah, I've been just doing it up. I was 11 when I started beatboxing and I was 14 when I started DJing. She's been grinding since her prepubescent days, y'all. That's true. I never even kissed a person before I started beatboxing, so. <laughs> oh, she ain't OG for that, yo. <laughs> All right, now, for any of you out there that might be interested in getting, like, gigs and whatnot, how would you how would you go about doing that? Because yes, you're somebody that has gigs pretty regularly as a DJ and whatnot, and I know as some stuff that you've, like, I've seen some video online and whatnot, some stuff I've seen of you. I know you mix some of your beatboxing room for your sets and your DJ yep. and the mm -hmm. such, you know, throw your little, you know, personality and your swagger in there so you have your own kind of identity as an artist. So how would you go about, if you were telling somebody that wants to become an artist, how would you go about telling them, you know, ways to get gigs, way to kind of form their own identity as an artist and the such? All right. Well, yeah. So, like, um, I mean, when I started out, uh, I didn't obviously get gigs regularly. I, especially beatboxing, I would do a lot. Of, I did a lot of talent shows for my, my high school and stuff. And I would always, like, you know, perform with, like, bands, um, just kind of around locally. And then when I started to get just a little bit older, probably around when I was like 15, um, actually maybe, yeah, 15, I would go to like open mics around the area and I would meet people in the scene, you know, just, just local people who were like throwing, like, hey, oh, we're doing this thing called the Bridge and Gaps Festival. We're, you know, rec shop movement, hip hop community. Um, we would love for you to come on and, you know, do, you know, do a set or whatever. We got free food. I was like, fuck yeah, food. Let's go. And true, I mean, true. yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, when you first start out, you're not going to expect to get paid. And that's yeah, not really you should, what it's You should about. never expect to like no. get big instantly. Exactly. And it's like, it's not, that's, that wasn't what it was about. Anyways, I was like, yeah, I get to perform. Fuck yeah. I was like. I was so pumped. And there I think, was, that's, like, a, I think that's an attitude that you should have yeah, going exactly. into it. Like, if you go into it strictly trying to get, like, oh, I'm trying to get big, you probably won't enjoy it. Like, you yeah. should enjoy doing it without being paid first so you can enjoy it more when you are being paid for it. Exactly. And there's some of those beatboxers that only want to be a beatboxer just so people can, like, it feel that, like, oh, my God, you could do that, I can't. Oh, my exactly. God, you're so cool and different. Like, no, fuck off, dude. But, like, um... Yeah, I would honestly. I used to go to open mics a lot and um, just meet people who wanted other people to perform, and like that's a great way too, just to practice on stage with a microphone. Yeah. I didn't have a microphone like um, with speakers growing up. I had turntables. I had a microphone. I just didn't have speakers to plug them into. I did, but like they were my dad's, and they were like these huge PV speakers that you would. It was a pain in the ass, so I never did it. So I always just go out and like. Um, perform live and I I've always been the type of person though I know I know a lot of people practice at home but I've always been the type of person just to like practice at things like that so like whenever even like when it came to DJing whenever I would just go um, I would never practice I would practice at home a little bit 
but whenever like I first started when I went out I sucked but I learned from it really really quick and like you I don't know I feel like I need a crowd to like perform I hate performing for myself or like doing like except for beatboxing I'm I just I mean we all fucking breathe that shit you can't not do it exactly. but like when it came to like DJing and stuff I would um I would never practice at home because I have such a like varied style of music I can't sure, I can't, I can't go from like dubstep to like Johnny Cash you can't you just can't do yeah. that you know so and plus, it's just, like with, with like I'm assuming with what you do it's you've like throughout some shows you've you've known certain things that will get reactions from crowds and what things won't yeah yeah absolutely oh absolutely there's that's the best time to like test out too before you start to, anyways i mean even before you start doing like you know beatboxing events and battles and showcases and stuff like that um I mean, that's, like, a different crowd of people. That's, like, the best time to, like, try to experiment, um, especially when it's not all beatbox, like, based. Because, like, they don't know, like, really much about beatboxing other than what sounds good and what doesn't. Like, exactly. what sounds dope. You know what I mean? Like, Even you don't if have you're to not... do something crazy for it to sound good. Right. And, like, you, I mean, it's also a, a thing with, like, versatility and flow because, you know, you could go to a beatbox event and your whole set could be just like, you know, dubstep and, you know, it could be nasty. But if you go to like, if you're doing like a festival and you like, not like a, um, like a big festival, but like a local, like, you know, like a, just a community festival or whatever. And you're doing it for like, you know, family and kids and like, you got to like, kind of like, you know, practice and be versatile and like trying to experiment with new things and new sounds that's yeah. why like people like the beatbox house and mark martin and gene and um kayla and all them they're very versatile and musical and that's that's what gets them booked a lot is because yeah, they're not they just change like to doing their the environment too. yeah exactly yeah like for instance like for any beatboxers out there that want to do more performance stuff first tip don't use your battle routines unless yeah. unless they're like more sh musical more than likely unless they're like a more musical routine don't use a battle routine in a, exactly. in a showcase like legit like for me personally when i'm like beatboxing and whatnot i have i have a few things that work for showcasing that also work for battling but like when i'm at home i don't really practice any of my showcasing stuff unless i'm actually getting ready for a showcase you know that that's just me, and that's a it's a good a good example is um, well for instance just like um Komodo, he I was talking to him recently. He said that like for American Champs, like he was just experimenting on stage for the most part, and he experiments in a lot of his battles and whatnot. And I think that's it's good cool. for a lot of people awesome. to take. Oh yeah, it's freaking awesome that he just did that. But it's also good for if anybody that's performing to feel free to experiment. And of course, be prepared. Don't just go up there and freestyle unless you're just that confident in your freestyling. Like it's probably not best to freestyle a performance for especially for people that aren't beatboxers. Like have some things prepared that may be a familiar tune that they can maybe sing along to if you want to. You know, melody they may recognize and the such. But you know, be prepared but also maybe think of like some trying some new stuff that might be able to boost your versatility in the future yeah exactly and like for like i mean for going back to like the battling versus like the routines versus the showcasing and you know performing live um not battling uh take your time too because like when you're yes. performing versus like battling it's all you know hype energy adrenaline oh my fucking god let's go kind of shit but like when it comes to performing you know if you like really like you know sway with it and don't go all in because with what if you go all in you gotta give them a little bit of you know a little bit of taste of it and then really yeah. once you you know tease them a little bit it's kind of, it's like foreplay it's like mental foreplay musical foreplay that's what you gotta like you know what i mean you gotta it's foreplay is important you gotta give them that true, you can't just true. go all in you know they're gonna be like okay that's cool now what <laughs> you did the drop already you just got on the mic you know exactly like for like for instance like just talking about that a lot like when we're battling you have a minute 30 usually per round mm -hmm. when you're performing you're probably gonna but have like, more than a minute and a half like yeah either for so, like five to yeah. ten to fifteen minutes i know i know there's beatboxers that have performed for fucking two hour sets 
I don't know how you do Reeps. it. Did it. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> oh, Dude, that's crazy. That. Like the longest actually, I've ever done is like around twenty straight, and that yeah. had me pretty tired. Like I could have kept going, but like I ran out of material and started getting kind of stale. <laughs> <laughs> It happens. No, it does. And then you want to do something else. But going back to like, you know, the gigs and stuff like that, honestly, what I did was I just jumped on anything I could get and met as many people and see what they were doing. Whether that even be like going to hang out and like, you know, jam at their studio or at their house or record or post videos. And like marketing is fucking key. If you're trying to get gigs, marketing is key. You got to market yourself right. You know, see what looks good, what gets um more attention what doesn't you know and try um your best to um put yourself out there and go out as much as possible when i was younger i mean still now but like when i was like younger i would like go out try i would try and go out every day like every day there was something and if if it was like you know i would try and sneak into the clubs or whatever or people would let me in because i would meet the people and i would go there or if you can't do that obviously because not a lot of people can but i couldn't all the time um you know there's an open mic every day around where i am and if not there's someone doing something there's a party you know what i mean just go to a fucking party see who has a mic and a fucking speaker and just yeah keep on. your eyes open get people to like your page get people to follow you you know what i mean like that's in like network, I, network network yeah exactly network it's all about networking and i'm very fortunate enough to have been able to um get to the point where i'm working every weekend like three days a week um or if not more some i mean sometimes i work six days a week you know it just depends what you're doing like i was like a couple weeks ago i had a radio show on wednesday that i went and i dj'd on and then i had um actually it was like a month ago and then i had on tuesday i was DJing, and then i had something on sunday and then i had a private event on uh thursday and then friday saturday was at the clubs and then monday was my day off so that was like that week so like it all like but it all depends and like sometimes i work two days a week but it's very inconsistent but now it's more consistent than ever that it's been for me so it's pretty cool i used to um just a couple of months ago i was i've actually it's probably been like the past it's just this year i've been getting more gigs like that whereas last year i was going to new york like every fucking month <laughs> and like i was able to like go out and hang out with you know my friends over there um but now i haven't been to new york in like three months but i'm definitely going next uh, month and i'm going i'm definitely going to um the great north battle next month in yo Canada. you can do american champs when of course yeah of course yes. Fuck yeah i unfortunately i couldn't make it to the american champs because i was having medical issues that's yeah. the why. That's the reason why I couldn't make it. But bitch, better believe I was pissed. I was like, I would see everyone have fun, and you know, I was low key, like sitting in my room, like, man, fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pissed because, like, you get to meet more people too. Okay? Exactly. Like, and of course, bad. of course, if you go there and compete, of course, people want to win and whatnot. But most yeah. most of the joy comes from just meeting and talking and jamming with other people. Exactly. Exactly. But uh, yeah. Let's uh, let, let's let's go into this uh, your South by Southwest recap because oh, for those that may not know, there aren't a lot of people in the beatbox community that have even done sets at South by Southwest. So she's she's one of the she's one of the few, you know, and you know the the Don himself, Reaps One, was down there. And he was. you know, I hung out with him for a little bit. Oh, yeah, you, you, you gotta fill us in now. You gotta fill us in. Like, how did you, did you see a set? <laughs> he, I didn't see a set. Oh, I contact, I know, but like, I like, I contact everybody. I was like, someone fucking get me in touch with briefs. I have to fucking hang out with Harry. Fucking Harry, come on. So finally, I get in touch with somebody down here who's like known. Uh, he's named Steve. He's the sweetest fucking guy. He, um, which he's really cool. He's been in the beatbox community since before the beginning. Like he's good friends with Reeps and like, you know, a bunch of like the beatbox battler uh, guys that he was like one of like, you know, before like really became the community. It was like the, one of the um, OGs. 
Yeah, for real. One of like, and he's not even in the like the community that much anymore. He's like down in Austin doing his thing, and he's so cool. And so I met up with him, and then I met up with Reeves, and me and Reeves ch- chatted for a bit. And he's like, "Yo, I, this is like my last show. I've been I've been like working so much. Like I'm exhausted." And so we filmed a little bit about him talking about some stuff, and like a little interview, and giving a shout out. Um, but he's really, really cool. It's my second time. The first time meeting him, he performed at um, Harvard. And obviously, I'm in Boston. So that was uh, pretty cool. And he fed me sushi through chopsticks. And he remembered me. So I was like, hey. he's like, he's like, yeah, just hit me up whenever. He's like, I'm going to be in New York soon. So if you're going to be around, hit me up. I was like, all right, word. He's really cool. Um, but I'm sure his set went fucking phenomenal. I got some people to like go through to his show that like I bought a hat off of or whatever. Um, but he, yeah, he's always killing the game all the time. Yeah. And actually, the only other beatboxer that I know of that performed um, at Self by Southwest ever was my idol growing up, which is Beardy Man. I love Beardy Man. Yeah, I'm pretty so. sure Beardy Man was like the first. Yeah, he was. And he's, he's, fucking he's amazing his improv yeah. shit that he does i can't get over it like any, any it of so you much. like any of you new cats that are just like babies in the scene only been here for like maybe three to two, two three years and y'all don't know who beauty man is you need to educate yourselves because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. not only is that man an og he's a he's nasty yeah. like a lot of the like a lot of the stereotypes is if you're like an og and be boxing you're not as diverse you know you probably have really good structure flow and really good sounds and such but you're not as diverse you may not be as quote-unquote cool nah beardy man is like he's the realest honestly literally he can do every fucking genre he can make yeah. three genres together it's the insane, is insane. Well, kids watch it for real like it I, did, I didn't even know what beatbox battling was. I didn't even know what beatboxing was until I saw Blake Lewis on American Idol in 2007. And I was like, that's fucking cool. It was, he wasn't even like that great on it. But like to me, I was like, oh, I was like, what the fuck is this? So I started doing that. Obviously, I sucked. And then I, I was like, I was just watching Blake Lewis beatboxing videos online. And then like I would like, you know, mimic him and then do whatever. And then I was like, huh, what other beatboxing is there and then you you saw like you know some of the classic shit like the you know that kind of shit yeah. um from that big french dude i forget like that but i, I used to know that is it eclipse? and then uh, no not eclipse was, like, the dude on the on... Show? yeah he was on the yeah, other yeah. show yeah yeah and then and then beardy man popped up and that like opened my whole world and i was like holy fuck and then like years later i or not years later but like maybe like a year or two later i found the battling and then i was like whoa and I was, then i was like obsessed that i became like that's it this is what i wanted to i told everybody i used to go to school we'd have show and tells and shit like that and i would just show beatboxing battling videos and i was like that's what i want to do that's going to be me i'm going to do that everyone's like you're fucking crazy i'm like i don't give a fuck that's, i'm going to do that i don't give a fuck what you say legend I was like, suck my ass. We were like literally in French. And she's like, this isn't French. I'm like, yes, it is. They're French battlers. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, was, I was like, it's culture. <laughs> suck a dick. Exactly. And honestly, if you really wanted to, you could you could easily pick apart the culture of the battling scene from like country to country. There's definitely oh, yeah. a cultural influence on and style. every scene. Like legit. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, but no, yeah, South by Southwest was awesome as per usual it's always crazy in the streets at night sixth street is a little lit street i performed on fourth um which is good if you're like in that general radius um i was uh doing a show on saturday and i hopped on from stage to stage beatboxing throughout and um i was able to actually beatbox for a couple of pretty cool people um like who? I, <laughs> uh well my fiance kind of pushed me to um to like you know kind of be more out there because whenever i was like i'm not a nervous or shy person at all but i'm just more timid around like you know big people i don't really like i feel you, I feel you. get like you know too excited she's she's just like do it i was like fine um but yeah so i was able to do a beatbox video for sure that was really cool. That um, got a little bit of attention on that. I think it's their 
one of their most viewed videos on their entire page and it's actually on their website too which is cool and they gave me a free microphone it's like the the one that you plug it's the mz88 the one that you plug into your phone which is really cool actually because i always record myself beatboxing and like like ideas on my phone and it always sounds like shit but it actually really really sounds good now so i can actually take it from my phone and put it on my computer because i use ableton and now i can actually sample myself and just do that and i can like use my samples which is fucking awesome i freaking gave you the hook up right there i know for real and if you will go go about. share that sure video i know i shared that most when i saw that Fuck go share yeah. that right now. hell yeah um but yeah so I, after, um, after that, um, I actually was able, and my show went really well. It, um, I, there was a couple of, uh, bigger name people that performed. It was cool. Some of them were dicks. Some of them weren't, (laughs) I won't name names, but, um, I actually, uh, I'm waiting for the text or the callback to uh, get the confirmation of when, it's being released, but I actually got to shoot for MTV too. Um, so are, are, are we cool. the are we the first are we the first to hear that? Yes. Ooh, we got that exclusive yeah. scoop. Yeah. Um, but they it was pretty cool. We were just kinda like walking down Sixth Street and there was this guy with a big ass camera and my fiance was just like pushing me and she's like, Go. No. I was like, Okay. So I just started beatboxing in front of it and they're like, Oh yeah, we're definitely using that. I was like, For what? For like MTV. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so I got Legend. all the contacts. It was cool. L- life um, lesson, kids. You never know. You should just hop in front of a camera and make noises. That, yeah. Always be the camera slut. You never know. Where always. That's been my life motto. <laughs> but yo, t- speaking about on footage and stuff, just roll it back real quick. I know you said that you shot some videos with Reaps. When 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 will those? When do you think those will be out? So I had a videographer come down um, and stuff like that. So he, we're going to go over all the footage next week. Um, I shot a lot of beatboxing videos when I was down there. Cause we were, he was just, you know, filming us like walking around the streets and stuff like that. So I'll be able to release a, a couple um, of new videos. Um, there's actually the guy, Steven, who was down there. He works at this uh, sound company. Um, or more like it's the Mexican American like council for something, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place. So we kind of got like VIP because like he had to call someone in and let the security guards let us in because like no one was there. And we got to film and perform, and he actually hooked up a sound system, which was sick, and like like wireless mics and the light, and like with like red lights everywhere. It was really really cool. So we got to film for that too. So I'm excited for to see. Uh, what we got for footage and stuff and my third year there I'm excited to go back next year um uh, I mean it's I think I think it's going to be a really successful um year um coming out of South by Southwest because a lot of people hate on it and a lot of people say oh well South by Southwest you know what do you get out of it and Honestly, it's just what you make of it to be honest if you're down there and you just go and perform and run back the fuck is the point of that you're going down there you're performing you need to talk to like i spent like this this year i spent like a week there and i just did straight up like networking the whole time and meeting people and you know the first day i was there like i went into this um it was a networking party but kent jones was performing and i got to talk to him and that was cool i got you know um i got to talk to sway from sway in the morning like you there's like a bunch of, yeah there's a lot of people down there and like you get to see a lot of people you get to see a lot of performers which is cool um but it's just like networking and what you make out of it and you just got to play it smart and not like let opportunities slip up and yeah I, I that's, like for, that's, that's for every people... gig you get though for like for anybody yeah. who's listening like any opportunity you get you you might be able to extend those opportunities if you don't let them slip by you yeah exactly but yo, keep us keep us in the loop though with these videos that'll be coming out and whatnot. You know, cool. let us know. We, we'll be definitely sharing them and whatnot all over our social media and the such. Of course, of course, hell yeah! I'll be posting them on Facebook and probably like you know Instagram and and, and shit and whatnot. And yeah, everybody go like her Instagram, like her Facebook, subscribe to her on YouTube, all that. You got a SoundCloud, yeah. right? 
Yeah, everything yeah. is at DJ Hershey except my YouTube is Hershey TV. There we go, y'all. Y'all know where to get her. Y'all know where to see all of her content and such. So make sure y'all go show her some love. And yo, That's Hershey, good. it was great talking to you. You know, so thanks, thanks for giving us a little behind the curtain. You know, peek Word. of you know the South by Southwest recap and uh, some tips for anybody that's trying to become an artist and whatnot, or just starting out. So anybody that is you know interested and whatnot, make sure you share this. All your friends that want to know how to get into the game, you know. But first things first. Thank you again, Hershey. Let shout Thank out the Boston Beatbox. Shout you know? out, yo! Shout out North American Beatbox. Hey, <laughs> yo, that's what's up. So we'll catch you guys next time. Probably interviewing some other people in the future. But uh, yeah, that was that. Thanks for uh, listening. <laughs>